Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then my name is Rosie and I'm a recent graduate in archaeology and anthropology from the University of Oxford. Before getting to uni, I read books such as this one and also from Lucy to Language by Donald Johansson. I had also done sociology, so I'd read stuff about Malinowski, Durkheim, and a lot of the early archaeological theories link very much with these. I have decided to come up with my top 10 book recommendations of things to read before uni or just if you're interested in archaeology. And these span from kind of very area-specific books to human evolution and about colonialism. They're very, very varied. Perhaps not in the author diversity side of things because unfortunately all of the like baseline archaeology texts are predominantly written by white men. This is changing and the reading lists at uni are developing far too slowly if anything but they are developing and I am going to bring out another video where I talk about different anthropology books. There will be a whole section on anthropology books written by women and people of colour which perhaps aren't on kind of these baseline starting university reading lists. Now depending on your syllabus these books might not be on your pre-reading list and also might not be directly useful. However, any form of reading around the subject, getting used to the language, getting used to like different time periods is going to be helpful. So yeah, hopefully this is quite general and will help you out. The first book on my list, number one, I actually have right here and that is Renfrew and Barnes Archaeology. Now, this one is not it's not a text that you want to be citing in an exam, however, it is very good for the terminology and just kind of getting to know the basics of the subject, the history of the subject. So it has a really good glossary, which explains all of the key terms. It also has a lot of like diagrams in it, and as you can see from all of the highlighting. I did use it as like a last minute revision tool. It is great if you have an essay or assignment or just an area that you're not really too sure that you understand, it will simplify it for you and it might then give you means to reference other people that whose, whose work that you can find based on the names that are written in here. So this, for example, I've highlighted the word Braidwood. I don't think it's going to focus. I then looked up who Braidwood was and you can find more comprehensive sources through books like this. So yeah, I would recommend, and this is on most people's university pre-reading lists, like the official reading list, so that is why it's my number one. <laughs> Book number two, I do not actually have, but I have read kind of online and from the library, is Stephen Mylan's Prehistory of the Mind. This was released in 1996, and there might be newer versions of it, but that's the original version. It's, it's more of a paleoanthropology book. It's about kind of the psychology and the biology behind human evolution. Stephen Mylan is an interesting character. Um, his books play to an audience so I would take them with a pinch of salt. He's very interesting and his books are great to read but I personally feel like that is actually a downside because quite often it does dumb down theories a little bit and he's a little bit, he romanticises things like one of his other books is called Singing Neanderthals and it's just, it's like an exaggeration, a uh, romanticised version of prehistory. However, this particular one is very interesting and is actually quite comprehensive and is also on a lot of university reading lists, so I would recommend that one. Number three is one that I did not read until first year, and that is Collapse by Jared Diamond, released in 2005. There is also a response to this called Questioning Collapse, which is by Yoffie. 
released in 2009 and if I were you I would pair them because quite often if you read someone's response then you actually get a more rounded view of what they're trying to say and you might actually understand what the original person is trying to say more if you read the response. Now Collapse is good because it covers lots of different societies, particularly the Maya, and it talks about, I think it's a five point framework if I can remember rightly, of reasons for why societies might have collapsed, why civilizations might have collapsed, and there's a lot of good definitions in there. Again, you can take it with a pinch of salt. It is a good book and it was a big source for a large section of our work in my first year. It came up on the exam, so <laughs> yeah, I'd recommend that one. Book number four is my absolute favourite book from just the general topic. It, this is old, it hasn't got a cover on it anymore, but it is From Lucy to Language by Donald Johansson and Blake Edgar. And why I like this book is because I don't feel like it dumbs stuff down. Donald Johansson was one of the archaeologists, paleoanthropologists, who found the Lucy skeleton and now Lucy is an Australopithecus afarensis. She's about 3.2 million years old, just over a metre high, and they think she is a female Australopithecus. However, it is, it's a little bit touchy to just automatically assume she's a female because she's not fully there. This book is particularly exciting because it has pictures in the back. So it's just full of pictures. Ah! It's full of pictures. All the pictures in the back show you kind of all the different. <laughs> all the different stone tool types which match to which um, ancient hominids and also then the hominids that go with that. It, as well as that, also has all the things about like out of Africa. It labels the schools for you, which is really useful and I've had to attempt to learn during my degree. Yeah, would really, really recommend that one. It's great, it's got so many pictures in it. Now number five is not on any of the recommended reading lists that I could find and I don't know if anyone would actually recommend it. Again, take this one with a pinch of salt because a lot of people disagree with him, but it's a very interesting and quite complex subject, and that is Chris Tilley's 2005 A Phenomenology of the Landscape. Now, phenomenology comes from philosophy, and it is essentially the feelings of the landscape, the, sound, the sounds, the smells, the sights, the thoughts, but it's mostly trying to get past the visual in archaeology. So it's a theory put forward to suggest that we should be thinking about landscapes in context only and the thoughts and the feelings of those who created those monuments in the landscape, for example, and what that might tell us about the site and situation and the reasons for and the life of the person as opposed to simply looking at the concrete evidence of what's there. And of course that is problematic, but it is a really thought-provoking article. I think what's more thought-provoking is the responses to it, which try and link it to GIS, which is attempting to link the qualitative uh, aspects of phenomenology with the quantitative aspects of archaeological science and geographic positioning systems. Some really good responses to this include Gillings, I don't know what year that was in, 2012, Gillings 2012 is a really good response. There's another one, Fleming 1999 is another critique of Tilly. There's a lot of things, if you google phenomenology and archaeology so many things will come up. A lot of them are on Google Scholar and are free to read kind of on Google Books. Number six is The Human Past by Scar. This is a 2005 book and essentially sums up the entirety of the human past in one book. Um, of course that means it doesn't go into great detail but it does sum things up. There's a really good website actually and the address for that is www.norton.com forward slash college forward slash archaeology forward slash human past. It has a like synopsis, 
summary and also quizzes and flashcards which are very helpful and I've only found since planning this video and wish I found during my decree. <laughs> but you're welcome. Okay, number seven is particularly useful if you are doing archaeology and anthropology and that is Godston's Archaeology and Anthropology. <laughs> This book was published in 1999 and, you know, it just, it sums up why the two subjects should be read together and kind of sums up both the two and, well, yeah, how they link. This one is definitely recommended by Oxford. And number eight is by our friend Diamond. Again, this one is a different topic. It's called Guns, Germs and Steel. It's essentially about why my explanation of this book was absolutely terrible and made no sense. So I have just found the one off Google. That is it on the screen now. <laughs> Despite being recommended to read this book at about seven different points during my degree, I never got round to it. So that's why I couldn't explain it very well. Please do not make the same mistake as me. Okay, number nine is a paleoanthropology book and that is Homo Britannicus by Stringer. Stringer is someone that you will read a lot of during your archaeology degree, particularly if you have paleoanthropology modules. I did just on my Google search, ha there was a link to Homo Britannicus PDF, so you might be able to find that online as opposed to having to go to a library which would be useful. <laughs> so yeah, Homo Britannicus by Chris Stringer. He is a paleoanthropology specialist, human evolution. Um, he also, I think this is Chris Stringer, has done stuff on Neanderthals, Homo habilis, and their like cognitive capacities. And that brings me on to book number 10, and that is The Mind in the Cave by David Lewis Williams. This book is about cave art, and kind of the axe in the cave. It's a sort of phenomenology related book. I might get hissed at for saying that by the entire archaeology community, but I'm just thinking about what I remember when I read it. It was about um, like the effects of hallucinogens on possible early artwork and whether actually early artwork might be to do with that whether different types of scratchings and circles and shapes were specific to hallucinogens and yeah, it's very interesting. And that is my 10 books to read to kind of grasp the basics of archaeology. And I hope you enjoyed. I have decided right now that I'm going to release a whole other video recommending 10 female writers because I don't think there was a single woman on that list and I kind of hate myself for it. <laughs> so that's going to come out, just you wait. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you don't already.